Welcome to Cannabinoid Therapeutics for Seniors. My name is Eloise Thiessen and I'm the co-founder of Radical Health. Radical Health is a cannabis clinic that helps patients, mostly seniors, use cannabis to treat age-related and chronic illness. In the past five years, I've treated over 4,000 patients with cannabis. The average age of our patient is 76 and 90% of them have never used cannabis before. About half of these patients want to use cannabis to treat pain, and about half want to use cannabis to treat sleep issues. In 2010, I was in a car accident that left me with a disability that I could not effectively treat with conventional pain medications. I came to cannabis as a medicine reluctantly and as a last resort. Using cannabis to treat my condition, I was able to return to work again and become a good mother and a good partner. Once I was able to get my pain under control, I went back to school to become a board-certified adult geriatric nurse practitioner. And while cannabis can be a safe and effective choice for seniors looking to treat age-related and chronic illness, or wanting to wean themselves from pharmaceuticals with severe side effects, many of the patients that we see at Radical Health are initially skeptical, just as I was, of using cannabis as a treatment modality. And yet seniors are the fastest growing demographic of cannabis users. Cannabis use among adults 65 and older is up 250% and nearly 60% in those aged 50 to 65. Despite these trends, the cannabis industry, industry has a lot of barriers of access for seniors. The product choices can be confusing, sometimes bewildering, the information off and advice often dubious. And without the proper guidance and information, the success rates can be low. Because of misinformation and misguided laws, I work in an industry where historically the burden of health care was shifted away from licensed professionals to mostly young retail workers. It's not uncommon that a patient will confess that their bud tender knows more about cannabis and how to treat their illness than the patient's primary care physician. These bud tenders have been on the front lines of cannabis activism, providing help and guidance to patients who could find it nowhere else. These men and women should be applauded for their work. That said, evaluating a patient and creating a treatment plan, especially for an older adult, is complex. We can't expect a person with a non-medical degree to adequately assess patients' needs, especially senior patients. Senior patients are unique because as we age, things slow down. We begin to see evidence of declining bioavailability, meaning that our bodies are able to use less of the things that we ingest. Our kidneys and liver work less efficiently, meaning that the body cannot as quickly clean toxins from the blood and metabolize the things that we consume. We struggle with other age-related biological changes, such as problems with balance, vision, and hearing. And of course, many of us struggle with the consequences of lifelong habits, such as poor diets, lack of exercise, too much alcohol, or smoking. Because senior patients experience a higher prevalence of chronic illness, they are more likely to be prescribed medications by their doctors. In fact, people aged 65 years and older comp comprise only 13% of the population yet account for more than one-third of total outpatient spending on prescription medications in the United States. Additionally, older patients are more likely to be prescribed long-term and multiple medications, and health issues related to polypharmacy increase with age. Polypharmacy is defined as five or more medications, not including supplements or vitamins. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Nearly 40% of senior eight, seniors aged 60 and older take at least five medications a day. Patients living in an assisted living or skilled nursing facility are frequently prescribed as many as 20 medications daily. And while this group comprises approximately 13% of the U.S. population, the same demographic accounts for nearly 25% of all emergency room visits. About half of these hospitalizations are the result of an adverse drug event. The risk of an adverse drug event is about 10%, which is one medication, but it increases with each additional medication. The risk of an adverse drug event is 100% when 10 or more medications are prescribed. With each additional prescription, 
medication compliance decreases, and the risk of interactions and adverse effects increase. Those experiencing cognitive decline may fail to understand or remember the proper dosing for each medication. And polypharmacy increases risk of death for patients taking prescriptions with black box warnings, especially for patients using antipsychotics to treat Alzheimer's or dementia. Seniors taking cannabis medications to help treat common ailments can encounter a set of challenges unrelated to the products themselves. New state regulations require that all cannabis be packaged in childproof containers. Seniors can struggle to open these containers, especially if they suffer from arthritis in the fingers and hands. They often resort to just cutting it open. Seniors may lack the dexterity to manipulate small droppers, syringes, and bottles. It's easy for them to spill liquid medications. And seniors may lack the strength to depress pumps or open vacuum-sealed packaging. Seniors may also struggle to understand new technology or devices, or they may simply lack the equipment necessary to charge or use new devices. Label instructions may be printed in fonts too small to read and <clears throat> often lacks the necessary information for patients to use the medication safely. Patients may encounter discrepancies between the information they receive from their doctor and the information they receive at the dispensary. Despite these considerations and challenges, we know that cannabis can improve the quality of life and health of seniors, and cannabis treatment can be a good alternative to the over-medication and subsequent side effects to which seniors are exposed and from which many senior patients suffer serious harm. Determining where to start and which product to buy can be overwhelming, especially for new cannabis users. So senior patients, what can you do to maximize the safety and efficacy of your treatment and plan and to minimize the risk of using cannabis as a treatment modality? Do these five things. First, work with a healthcare professional. Some patients skip this step because it can be expensive and insurance companies do not cover these costs. However, working with a healthcare professional can be an effective way to save time and money. An experienced healthcare professional that can get you started with a treatment plan that includes specific products, dosing and frequency, and can save you the heartache and expense of false starts and bad advice. Two, select a route. Applying cannabis topically can be a good place to start, even if you're new to cannabis or if you're anxious about using cannabis. Topicals provide local relief by, by penetrating only the top layers of the skin. Because they do not reach the bloodstream, topicals generally have no systemic side effects. Topicals can provide relief of pain in the hands, neck, feet, and ankles. Ingesting cannabis can be an effective option if you're treating sleep-related issues, mood imbalances, or chronic pain. However, when consuming cannabis orally, there is a wide array of onset variability with perceived effects within one to three hours of ingesting. Depending on your metabolism, <clears throat> The duration of the effects can last more than five hours, especially in a new, inexperienced user. Dosing is key with edibles. Work with a knowledgeable healthcare professional to determine the effective low starting dose. Inhaling cannabis relieves pain quickly, as well as other symptoms, and gives you the most control over your dose. And while many seniors are reticent to smoke, this option can be very effective when treating pain, nausea, appetite loss, and depression. Three, select a cannabinoid. You can use cannabis to relieve pain, improve sleep, reduce stress, and improve mood. But which cannabis products, which cannabinoids should you look for in your products? It depends, but in general, you can use small amounts of THC to reduce pain and inflammation. Look for THC to reduce inflammation and to treat mild pain without the euphoric or impairing effects of THC. Use CBD to treat mild pain, anxiety, help reduce inflammation, and to mitigate the unwanted effects from THC, like lethargy, dysphoria, and short-term memory loss. CBD alone may not be enough to control your pain. And use CBDA to help treat mild pain and fatigue. Pick a product. First and foremost, we want to ensure that the product is safe. Cleanliness and product safety remains an issue in the cannabis industry. Some states have mandatory testing. Others do not, and even when there are safety regulations in place, 
Cannabis products tainted with pesticides, mold, or bacteria can sometimes find their way into the market. Always ask to see the test results. Next, look for products that you can consume in small doses. Some cannabis products now even enable you to precisely dose down to a single milligram of the active ingredient. Make sure that the label clearly identifies the ingredients, including the milligram of cannabinoids and ultimate and optimally the terpenes. Terpenes are organic compounds with strong odors that are produced by plants. These are, there are an estimated 200 terpenes in cannabis. The main terpenes in cannabis have been studied and they demonstrate that they have their own therapeutic properties. In fact, terpenes are the reason why you can have two different strains of cannabis with similar cannabinoid profiles but with very different effects, one very sedating and one uplifting or energizing. For example, cannabis products that contain myrcene and linalool are appropriate to use in the evening as these terpenes are typically sedating. Products with lemonine or pinene, however, are more appropriate for daytime use, as lemonine and pinene can both be alerting. Five, formulate a plan and stick to it. All cannabis patients require an individualized treatment. Generally, you will start with a low dose, then slowly and iteratively increase the dose until you reach efficacy. Starting with a low dose minimizes unwanted side effects and reduces the chances of building a tolerance to the effectiveness of that dose. For senior patients, an average dose can be between one and three milligrams. Some of you will need more, others less. Treat one condition at a time and consider how much you need of each route of administration. For example, if you're treating constant arthritic pain, you may need to apply a topical directly to the area, ingest cannabis to help treat the pain throughout the day, and inhale cannabis to treat breakthrough pain. Your plan must include how much of a medicine to take, how frequently to take it, and how long to take a specified dose. Discuss with your healthcare professional when and under what circumstances you should increase your dose, as well as the predicted length of therapy. Even using these steps, some experimentation is often necessary. Individualize your treatment to fit your lifestyle by experimenting with different cannabinoids, dosages, and frequencies. Many patients find relief with cannabis. It can be a safe and effective choice for treating age-related and chronic illnesses and for possibly reducing your intake of pharmaceuticals that have severe side effects. Patience and persistence often pays off. Thank you.